Oh my god, you guys, I am literally dead inside right now. I spent all day filming this review for this shitty book right here, which is literally called The Straight Girl's Guide to Sleeping with Chicks. My voice is almost gone because of how much I yelled at the camera for hours straight about 300 straight pages of bisexual erasure and sheer turfitude, and then this happens. I was partway through editing this video. All of a sudden, new topic bursts into my face and demands my immediate attention. Don't worry, for those of you who are looking forward to my review of The Straight Girl's Guide to Sleeping with Chicks, oh, it's coming out tomorrow morning, so you better have that little bell icon rung because we've got a lot to unpack on that, but first, let's unpack this. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome for the first time. I'm Savvy and this is Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business that includes book reviews and business ethics commentary, including videos about my own writing and anti-MLM, taking down pyramid scheme stuff and all of that. But a little while ago I made this video where I was talking about how authors should not be responding to negative book reviews, which we are going to talk a little bit more about today. In that video I specifically talked about the situation where Gabby Hanna went on her Instagram story and started saying all this nasty shit to Rachel Oates because Rachel Oates gave her a negative book review. And you guys know that I will defend Rachel on that because book reviewers should have a safe place to say what they want to without fear of authors coming after them. You know why? Because generally, not always, but generally authors have bigger platforms than reviewers. Authors are the ones profiting off of these things. And as a business person, I believe that product reviews are there for the customer. So when a reviewer has to say what they want to say about a product, they should not be living in fear that the author is gonna come at them, start harassing them and sending their greater fan base after them that's just completely unethical. We'll talk about all of that in a second. But the reason I'm making a follow-up video to this, which by the way, if you didn't see it, I'll link it up in the cards. The reason I'm making a follow-up video to this is that during that video, I briefly talked about how another YouTube creator named Jimmy Snow inserted himself into this and how I personally thought his actions were inappropriate, but that I wasn't going to delve too deeply into it because I wasn't there for this. This was more of an interpersonal interaction. But he just dropped a video sharing his side of the story, which, surprise, is literally exactly the same as everyone else's side of the story. And we're going to talk about this. Now, I want to make it clear before I go into this video and before I pull up his video and before I pull up my old video and before I pull up some sources, I want to make it clear that this video is not going to be about Gabby Hanna at all. This is not about her. I am sure that since Jimmy posted this video that there are going to be plenty of videos coming out about whether it's ethical that he's friends with Gabby after everything that's come out and then apparently I saw on my YouTube feed that like right before I started filming this apparently Gabby released some video about her drama with Trisha Paytas or whatever and so I'm sure that's gonna be like was whatever ethical and like that's not what this video is about I know that there are plenty of drama and commentary channels that are gonna be on that this video because this channel is about books and business this video is going to talk about whether Jimmy and Gabby were in the right here and whether Rachel was in the right here exclusively from the publishing industry perspective exclusively from the book review community perspective we're keeping this focused on books and nothing else so if you came here to listen to someone shit talk Gabby Hanna then you're gonna be sorely disappointed because this video is about books y'all if you're new to my channel right now and you don't know who I am let me briefly give you an overview of my credentials in this world I have been working in the book publishing world for half a decade now I've also been working in the journalism world for about the same amount of time I am the author of 10 published books Four of them were self-published novels that I put out myself. One of them is my most recent traditionally published novel, 90s Kids, which is linked in the description below. And the other five are books that I created with my own company, Forever Home Friends, which produces books, plushies, and other toys and merch based on real rescue dogs. So I created a company that published those books that also produces other items. So I have been on the author side. I have been on the publisher side. I have also worked as an editor for a publisher for other people's books. And my channel started out as 
was an exclusively booktube channel before I branched into additional things in addition to the booktube content. And so I have had lots of experience in the book review world. I've been sent arcs by publishers to review books. I used to run a book blog before I moved exclusively to YouTube. Basically, I've been involved in the book world for a long time. Writing has been the main part of my career since I've been a full adult with a full career. And that's why I really think that this is an important angle to talk about this topic from that not a lot of other channels are going to be covering. However, if you don't want to take my word for the fact that authors should not be responding to negative book reviews, I'm going to pull up some sources where other writers and other people involved in the book publishing world talk about this as well. Then from there, I'm going to show what I said in my previous video about Jimmy, and then I'm going to show what Jimmy said about Rachel and Gabby and why Jimmy is incorrect in this situation. Let's do it. Now, first of all, when I say that authors should not respond to reviews, I don't mean that as a definitive black and white thing. I don't think anything in life is ever completely black and white. For example, when I see a YouTuber put out a review of one of my books or I see a review pop up on Goodreads, generally I might respond by saying, thank you for reviewing this book. If they give it a positive review, I might say, I'm really glad to hear you liked it. If they give it a negative review, I might say, I understand where you're coming from. Thank you for the review. However, what you don't do ever under any circumstances is tell the reviewer why they're wrong, argue with the reviewer about their decision, and you especially do not publicly blast the reviewer and send your fans after them. That just makes authors look so bad, and it's a huge reason that there's like so much drama in the book community on social media and on Twitter and YouTube and everywhere all the time. So we're over here on this site called Book Riot, and the title of this article that we're going to look at is called Authors. Seriously, please don't talk to us. This was posted only about a month ago. It says here, and by us, I mean reviewers. Of course, people have said things like this before. Book Riot published an article six years ago saying pretty much the thing, but that was six years ago, and since then, I don't think anything has improved, so I'm here to say it again. Authors, for the love of God, do not reply to reviewers. Since I was 18, I've been reviewing both on Goodreads and my blog every single book I've read. I'm by no means some sort of one-starring troll, my average Goodreads rating is actually 3.26, which suggests I'm pretty much bang in the middle. But if I don't like a book, I'm not afraid to say exactly why that is. And that's occasionally gotten me into some irritating interactions over the last three years, where specific authors have decided to personally send me abusive messages or recruit their friends to do it on their behalf. They're fully entitled to say negative things about a book if that's their opinion, and bearing in mind opinions are subjective, there's almost no way for an author to disagree factually. Nor should authors suffer from the belief that a slew of five-star ratings is the only possible path to success for a book. This whole thing is just a mess. It's pretty well known and over here is the article that was put out six years ago saying over here dear authors don't respond to goodreads reviews another day another classic goodreads meltdown someone gave self-published author dylan secochio i don't know how to say that a one-star review and he went apopleptic. His account was then banned, and you can read his comments and check out the archived thread. Now, this behavior leads people to quit Goodreads. It leads people to, it discourages people from reviewing books. And I've got to say, this is a huge problem. When you're an author, you want your book to have reviews. When I get more reviews on my book, right, for example, on Amazon, once you hit a certain threshold of people having reviewed your book, it then starts recommending it more frequently in the, like, people also bought this section on Goodreads that helps you in the algorithm to boost you. People want reviews for their book. Doesn't matter if they're good or bad. If you're an author, you should be going into this expecting that you're going to get some good and some bad. Re reviews in general are something that is beneficial to authors. And if authors continue to make reviewer spaces unsafe environments, it's going to hurt all authors in the long run, and it's going to discourage people from giving us honest reviews, which hurts our profession and makes it look bad. Now, let's get into the part where Jimmy came in on all of this. And I want you guys to know from the get-go, I was a fan of Jimmy for a while. I do not hate him. I'm not trying to hold this against him personally, but I think from a professional book review standpoint, it's important to look at what Jimmy Jimmy was saying and why he's incorrect on this. And I have been a little disappointed that he hasn't been listening to people's criticism and talking to people who objectively know more about this issue than he does. And that's, I just want to be clear, do not send anyone hate after watching this video. I do not want to hear about anyone having sent hate to Jimmy Snow, to Rachel Oates, or even to Gabby Hanna, because this channel does not exist to send hate to other people. We're here to talk about books and business. Take it away.
say savvy of two months ago. See what happened is there's another YouTuber that a lot of you guys know because a lot of people who watch me also seem to like him and his name is Jimmy Snow. His channel used to be called Dear Mr. Atheist but he makes content for the atheist and skeptic community and also commentary and things like that. He's done a lot of videos that also address you know anti-MLM stuff and you know how Young Living Essential Oils is tied into Mormonism and things like that. He has a lot of really interesting videos and I've liked a lot of the content that he's put out. However I was a little disappointed in him involved in this interaction. So basically what happened I apologize if I can't show you guys anything hopefully I tell it to you well enough with my voice. So we have a mutual friend who messaged her outside of me I literally did not talk to him at all. He saw that she was doing and he messaged her and he said have some fucking compassion you've been the center of hate campaigns online leave this girl alone like you're just bullying to be fair after taking yet another look at what was uh what was said here Gabby's definitely misrepresenting what was said, but that's kind of beside the- Face yourself, bitch. Like, that's crazy to me. Jimmy Snow is also friends with Gabby Hanna. There had been a rumor that she had asked him to say this. I don't think she asked him to say this. She basically debunked that. I think he just saw that she, as his friend, was feeling a little down about the fact that her poetry had been getting negative reviews. She was a little scared that her next book wasn't going to be received well, which is completely fair. As an author, you know, when I put out my work as an author, I am always scared that like, oh, someone might not like this. I might get some negative reviews, but that's just something that you know is gonna happen and is part of the risk of going into a risky creative field where people's opinions of it are going to be subjective and opinionated. But she was feeling a little nervous which is completely completely valid. I think he as her friend noticed that and since he was also friends with Rachel Oates and they had collaborated on some of their atheist content in the past because they were friends he decided to reach out to her and say hey you know Gabby is feeling a little stressed about this just remember that like when you're reviewing it remember that she has feelings and things like that. Rachel Oates you know posted about this to Twitter. Honestly I think this comes what this comes down to is not any person being a good or bad person or any person being right or wrong. I think what this comes down to is commentary YouTubers who are not used to book review world conventions. So in the book review world, in the publishing world in general, and these are conventions, they're not law, they're not set in stone, we can always talk about whether some of these things should change. However, it is expected in the book review world that if someone sends you an ARC, if someone sends you an advanced copy, you should give them an honest review. That's the reason that publishers and authors send them out is that for the sake of honest reviews. And there's also an expectation that nobody's ever owed a good review or a bad review, and there's an expectation that when your work goes out there, it is up for the public to judge, it's up for readers to judge. It's not polite, it's not kind if people give you personal attacks based on it, and I would never condone that. However, the the work itself is now up to public scrutiny and that is what is expected. So when he messaged her this and she talked about it, she, first of all, I just want to be clear, she didn't call him out. She was just posted a screenshot and was like, a friend just sent this to me and I feel weird about it. It was that kind of thing. She blocked out his name, everything. And then he was in the comments like getting upset at her for posting it and things like that. And then a whole interpersonal re interaction went on that I'm not going to delve into because I didn't get screenshots and I honestly don't remember most of what happened beyond that. But anyway, I didn't originally know that it was him who sent this. I saw this on her Twitter and I originally was like, that is a very inappropriate thing to message someone. Me as a book reviewer and as an author. As someone who has sent my book out to people to review and who has also reviewed other people's books and received arcs of other people's books and did and does book reviews on my channel regularly. As someone who does that, I found his message to her very inappropriate. If you have a friend who is coming to you and trying to bring their emotions and their friend's emotions and the author's emotions into this, that almost seems like trying to skew a review to me. That doesn't seem like you're going to get the most accurate review from that. And as a reviewer, I found it personally inappropriate. Now, I don't think that Jimmy Snow who said this, I don't think that he was being a bad person doing this. I think that his intentions were good. I think he was trying to say, you know, I'm worried about my friend here and I don't think he was thinking of it in terms of the publishing industry standards and book review ethics. I don't think he was thinking of it in that way. However, as a member of the book community, as a member of the book review world and the author world, I was like, you don't do that. No, 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 no. When someone receives a book, like you can talk to them about your opinions on it, but like to try to direct any way of how they might talk about it or what they might include in their review, it's not illegal. It's not unethical. Obviously anyone can say whatever they want to whoever they want. To me, it just seems weird and it doesn't seem conventional for how a book review would happen. So I thought that he was definitely the one who was a little bit out of line there. Again, though, I think his intentions were probably good and I don't judge him for that. But okay, so I stand by literally everything I said in this video um, and I think it's accurate and I think that he definitely hasn't taken any of that consideration and still is like I, the, when we're going to review his video the biggest problem that I have with it is the way he's talking about things without having done any research into how the book reviewing world works. And I, I get it. I get that this is a world that is not his normal territory. So I don't think he's being a bad person, but I definitely think he's being very unfair to Rachel Oates in this situation because she is very involved in the book reviewing world. She is a reviewer. She knows what she's talking about in this situation better than he does. And he hasn't been listening to any feedback from book reviewers who have brought this up. So I'm gonna we're gonna take a look through his video. His video is pretty long and so I'm gonna play it at one and a half speed and we're just gonna talk about a few parts. I'm gonna move myself over here so we can see the messages. Whee! Here I am, I'm floating right next to the receipts. 
sticking myself in the middle of other people's interactions. And this is how I started it. And do I regret sending this com message? Yes, but not because I think I sent anything that was wrong to do, uh, but because of the fallout, to tell you the truth. It's kind of like that. I what you what he sent was wrong. Yes, I think he should regret it because of what he sent. And I we're going to we're going to take a look at what he sent. I'm going to explain why I think that this message was not a good thing to send. I'm also going to explain why I think his intentions were probably good, but then Rachel does go on to explain to him why this wasn't a good thing to send and he doesn't listen. So let's take a look at this. Hi, hi. So I have no expect expectations, but I thought you'd want to know while I don't think Gabby watches the videos themselves, I know the reactions people have to your videos about her poetry definitely hits her feelings. I'm not saying do or don't make the videos, but I thought you'd want to know that the human on the other side of it definitely experiences severe negativity because of it. She hasn't asked me to say this to you, by the way. She told me another one is coming and it's obvious to me that she's messed up with anticipation. So let me... Okay, so he's about to explain the context of this, but real quick, I'm going to say why I personally, if I had been Rachel and I had received this message, why I would not have liked this as a book reviewer. He says, I know that the reactions people have to your videos about her poetry definitely hits her feelings. So my question would be, what's the purpose of sending this message? It's very clear from here that his purpose is to get Rachel to think about how Gabby's going to feel and respond to Gabby's review, whether that's a YouTube review, a Goodreads review, an Amazon review, or even her tweets about it, how Gabby's going to feel about Rachel's opinion about her book. He's trying to get her to think about how Gabby's going to feel and react to that. He then says, I'm not saying do or don't make the videos, but I thought you want to know that the human on the other side of it definitely experiences some negativity because of it. But then when he says, um, that the human on the other side definitely experiences some negativity because of it. And then it says that it's obvious she's messed up in anticipation. I don't think Jimmy's intent, based on what he's saying, I don't think his intention was to be manipulative. However, if I had received this as a reviewer, like let's say I'm about to review, let's say I'm about to review Jen Sincero's book, The Straight Girl's Guide to Sleeping with Chicks, which is going to be a review that's going up tomorrow on my channel. The review is scathing. I tear the book apart. I think it's one of the most problematic books that's harmful to society. Now let's say that five minutes after I finish filming this video, I get a message from one of Jen Sincero's friends. Maybe it's someone that I'm friends with too. Maybe Jen Sincero, the author of this book, and I had a mutual friend this whole time and I had no idea. And she reaches out to me and says, hey, Savvy, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm actually friends with Jen Sincero. And I know that she heard that you're going to put this negative review out because I put out a, a couple tweets and a couple Instagram posts about it. She heard you're going to put this negative review out. And I'm not saying do or don't post it, but just know that her, her, like that this, this, that negative reviews really hurt her feelings or that she's really nervous and messed up in anticipation. What effect would that have other than making me feel guilty about the fact that I am going to post a scathing negative review because that's my honest feelings about the book? That's the only effect it could possibly have. So what this comes down to, even if he wasn't intentionally trying to skew the review, the effect is that when you say that to a book reviewer, it starts to make them feel emotionally guilty about what they're about to say about the book because suddenly now they feel like they have a personal connection to it, whereas in the past they could have put distance. Guys, imagine what a different world we'd be living in right now if one of Rachel Hollis's friends had reached out to me before I reviewed Girl Stop Apologizing to tell me how upset she'd been about the Girl Wash Your Face review or something like that. Imagine what a different world this would be. And by different world, I mean that's putting myself up on a pedestal. I mean, imagine what a different YouTube channel this would be. Be. My point is this just isn't fair to say to a reviewer when they should be going into something objectively to give their review honestly without trying to bring anyone's personal feelings into it. When I say that she's messed up in anticipation, the reason wasn't because she was worried about another bad review. Uh, the actual thing I was reacting to, because when I sent this message, I believe it was already out or was about to be out and I had no idea the review was out. The reason why I sent the message was I had seen the mess the tweets and the things that were actually making Gabby feel bad because people were already attacking her prior to the review coming out because there were, I think it was tweets and Instagram stories and these were not constructive criticism. And I will stand by this all day long. It was things like, is it possible for Gabby's poetry to make me physically ill? Things of that nature. Now listen. I'm not saying that Gabby shouldn't be able to roll with the punches. Uh, in fact, Gabby can roll with more punches than most people can because she's one of the most hated people. Real quick, I do not support anyone bullying Gabby Hanna. If you're going to bully Gabby Hanna, don't, don't, just don't. It's weird to bully people you don't know online. Criticize people in their actions, but don't bully them. It really doesn't matter if, about her YouTube video review or if he's talking about 
opinions that she reviewed with the book on Twitter. That's still part of a review. She's still a reviewer and putting her opinions about it on Twitter. I put my opinions about books out on Twitter. I talked about how Jen Sincero's book, The Straight Girl's Guide to Sleeping with Chicks, review coming tomorrow, about how that book makes me physically ill, about how I want to vomit from all the turf shit and all the bisexual erasure in it, right? I talk about that. So it doesn't matter if you're tweeting it, if you're posting it in your Instagram story, which I've also been doing for this, doesn't matter. That's still that reviewer's opinion. If Rachel had been tweeting something like, can you believe that Gabby Hanna is such a shitty person? Or can you believe that she is such an ugly, dumb bitch? Which Rachel would never do, because I've talked to her since this, and she's like one of the sweetest, nicest, most kind-hearted person. That would be a personal attack. But she was talking about the poetry. Even if she's saying something like, is it possible for the poetry to make me physically ill? That is her reaction to the poetry, which she, as a reviewer, is sharing. And that is completely within the bounds of what is okay as a book reviewer to do. Doesn't matter if you need if you thought she was going to post it on YouTube, which she did. Doesn't matter if it's posted on YouTube, on Goodreads, on Amazon, on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever she posts her thoughts about the book, those are still her unbiased thoughts about the book, which are not up to her friends to come in and try to bias that. That doesn't make sense. Jimmy's saying like, it wasn't constructive criticism and I'll stand by that. It doesn't matter if you interpret it as constructive criticism or not. The fact is, it's criticism about her book. It's not criticism about her as a person. It's not criticism about her appearance. It's criticism of her work, which is what Rachel was reviewing. And I will stand by the fact that book reviewers should feel comfortable sharing their opinion about a work without worrying about the author or the author's friends getting personally offended by that. But there's something I want to point out in here. So I was reacting not to the review itself, though I knew the review was coming. I had never, ever seen a single Rachel review or read, I have never in my adult life read a poetry book. I don't care about poetry. Gabby Hanna, as a friend, sent me a poet. Then why are you inserting yourself into the book reviewer world when you don't know shit about it and just admitted that? Poetry book. And I literally told her like, hey, well, I asked, did you send me a poetry book? She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me what you think about it. And I was like, I feel so awkward because I feel like I need to tell you I will do that, but I'm not going to because I don't care about poetry. I'm not going to read this. Uh, and it was fine. It was, she, she was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I respect it. Um, uh, uh, there is this kind of funny thing of that, like our oh, people are trying to message me things. Let me try and put this on. Don't disturb. I don't know if that'll help or not, but hopefully it does. Um, uh, people. Anyway, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, but I was reacting to these tweets that were not constructive criticism that were nasty tweets to make. Uh, and if, if Rachel and I were talking about this in private, I would say those aren't useful. And unfortunately, the thing that I have seen, I don't. So this is one of the ones I don't have the receipts for because I think it was a story or a tweet or something that that is gone. Uh, uh, but. Uh, I recall seeing her defense of using those kinds of comments as this is what you do to promote a video. That is not a good excuse. Don't hold that against Rachel, because again, I don't have the receipt for you to show, uh, but that is my- There's nothing- why is that not a good excuse? That's perfectly valid excuse. You can promote a video by giving a sample of the kind of review that you're going to give in your tweets. There's nothing wrong with that. That's part of the review. Again, Jimmy admitted that he doesn't read poetry books, that he wasn't going to review it, that he's never even watched any of Rachel's reviews. Jimmy is basically admitting he has no connection to the book review world whatsoever, and yet is out here judging how people do it. And completely violating what is considered ethical within the book review world. And that's not to say that he should know these expectations, but when Rachel explains them to him, he should be understanding of that. Having seen her tweets, I had assumed her videos included things like, this is making me physically ill. Oh my god, this is like not- it wouldn't matter if it does, though. In my book reviews, I say when books are making me physically ill. I literally almost cried while reviewing Girls Stop Apologizing because of how bad the body shaming it, in it was. In this book, I, like, feel nauseous when there's a section that, like, excuses sexual harassment and things like that. And this is not me here to say whether or not Gabby's book is good or bad. I've literally never read it. My point is that that doesn't matter. That's completely beside the point. Whether her review videos work, even if her review videos did say this book made me physically ill, that is her right as a reviewer. Now, I will say I give Rachel more credit than I give myself even as a reviewer because Rachel is very constructive. She's very analytical. She really does break things down and doesn't usually let her personal emotions get in the way. She is a really, really good reviewer. 
I personally do. I fly off the handle a lot more, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with me doing that either because reviews inherently are about how that reader felt about it and it is for other readers to decide if that's something they want. If knowing that Gabby's poetry made Rachel feel physically ill is something that is going to deter someone from buying it, she has the right to say that. And I will stand by that. Not actual constructive criticism, uh, uh, but basically that she would say the same types of things in her tweets, that, that her tweet persona and her YouTube persona would be different. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what someone else deems as constructive criticism or not. Every reviewer can say what, I, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. So, yeah, uh, Rachel says back to me, she sent me the book knowing I'd review it. I wasn't going to do a fake review, which I have no problem with her saying because at no point have I said do a fake review or don't review the book. The problem is at 5.30, 5 minutes, 30 seconds, I think it is, I'm just gonna keep playing. She said this. He felt a little bit manipulated because he said that Gabby had gone to him and was like really upset that I was going to be making another video about her book. And I was like, but she asked me to like, and I didn't understand it. And there was like a whole thing. And I think there's just like misunderstanding and miscommunication on like lots of sides. So the thing is, she, that isn't what I said. It does sound like it was just a miscommunication. Honestly, I think Rachel's right about that. And I know people are like, yeah, but you could read into that. Rachel's known me longer than that. She didn't know I had autism back then, uh, uh, but people do know now, but she also knows, knew me well enough to know I communicate directly. The words I say are all the words I need. Um, so this is where I definitely understand where Jimmy's coming from, because while I'm not diagnosed with autism, I one of the symptoms of my OCD is that I do understand things in direct communication only. I don't make inferences. I'm not good. I'm like, I'm shocked even that I'm able to talk about book review community conventions. But honestly, it's because I've read so many articles and I've seen so many people talking about this in our community and it has been nailed into everyone's head. Authors don't respond to negative reviews, that, that things like this, like, have been directly basically stated in these communities, which is why I think Jimmy should have done research on how book reviewers work before doing this whole thing. Now, I will say I completely understand where he's coming from in terms of like being able to infer things or assume things. I'm terrible at that. And it is as a result of being neurodivergent, similar with him. We have the same kind of thing going on there where we both struggle to pick up on cues. We both struggle to understand things if they're not stated directly. We both state directly what we mean to other people as well. So if sometimes if someone says, Savvy, didn't you mean this? And I'm like, no, that's not what I said, then I'll get very frustrated. So I can get where his frustration is coming with that. However, I will say that just based on exactly what he said, I do think that he was in the wrong here. And I think it's also important to recognize that different people communicate very differently. I communicate in a similar way that Jimmy does, so I get what he's saying about this. However, sometimes people will interpret what I'm saying in a different way. Because sometimes I know a lot of people who they say things but are really implying something or there's some reading between the lines and I don't pick up on it. Or I say something that is literally exactly what I meant and that other person interprets something that I didn't intend to be there. It doesn't mean that they were wrong to interpret interpret it that way. It means that that person and I have different communication styles and need to sit down and break this down with each other, which I think is what happened here. Wasn't that she was upset that she was making a review. It was that she was sick with anticipation. What was the exact phrase I used? Um, definitely experiences a severe negativity because of it. Uh, I know that the reactions people have to your videos about her poetry definitely hits her feelings uh, and that she's messed up in anticipation. And that's the, that's the most that she's worried about that. Again, myself reacting to the tweets I've seen because I and that, that's my question is I always want to ask why for everything. So Jimmy said exactly what he said, and I'm not going to infer his motivations, but my question would be, what was the purpose of sending that? Clearly he said directly, I'm not going to say do or don't make the review. And because he said he communicates directly in exact words, I will take what he says as face value, which is that he is not saying not to make the review. He's not saying that. And that's fine. But I still want to know what was the purpose of saying that? Was your purpose to get Rachel to not say the kind of thing she was saying on Twitter, because that's what it's kind of sounding like based on the rest of this. And it's still not your place to say that. I just want to say real quick that if I'd been in Gabby's position here, I would have been really insulted. I just put out a new book, 90s Kids. It's linked in the description below. You can read it. You might like it. You might not like it. And that's exactly how books work. That's how books in all forms of art work. If there was somebody, let's say someone out there read the book, didn't like it at all. Now let's say they want to read another one of my books and that person had just left me a really, really scathing review online about how much they hate it. If it turned out we had a mutual friend that I didn't know about and I learned that one of my friends had reached out to them to talk about how messed up in anticipation I was, I would be insulted. 
As an author, I want to see people's truly honest reactions to my work. I want real people to feel comfortable saying their exact opinions about the stuff I put out there for their consumption. I would be so insulted if I were in Gabby's position right now. But clearly she wasn't based on the Instagram stories we showed. I didn't re realize the review was already out. And as Rachel just mentioned, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember how she put it, but the, 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 there seemed to be miscommunications. The thing is, is that I've cleared up those miscommunications multiple times now, and she's still saying what she just said, which isn't actually true. Anyway, she that's absolute crap. I'm not going to be guilted into changing my opinion, which no one has asked her to do. Can you imagine if other authors sent to review her book and said, but you should only publish the review if it's positive? Also never happened. If she doesn't want people critiquing her poetry, she should stop selling overpriced, awful poetry. Once again, her, so at this point, I still haven't seen any, uh, to this day, I haven't seen her poetry reviews. I don't care about poetry and there's no real reason for me. However, I have now just seen another example of her using what just seems like overly negative language might be totally true. It might be completely right. However, that compared with the tweets that I've already seen, it seems to me like this picture in my head that was apparently wrong of what kind of review it would look like. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of review it would look like. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Reviewer spaces need to be protected for reviewers to have whatever review they want. I will say that doesn't account for personal attacks about the author. So like if someone was gonna, if, if Rachel had made a review and the review had been, again, Gabby's an ugly dumb bitch or something like that and had nothing to do with the book itself but was all about her as a person, sure, in that case, that's no longer criticism, that's bullying. But Rachel never did anything like that and never would do anything like that. And her tweets were still, even if they said I made her physically ill, her tweets were still about the poetry. So there was never any risk of this happening at all. Jimmy is just not aware of how reviews work. It doesn't, you know, at this point, nothing's telling me that that picture in my head is wrong. And then she goes, she knows I review poetry, all poetry, not just hers. And she still sent me the book. She knew it was coming for months. And again, these are refutations of something no one has challenged. So I write, like I said, she didn't ask me to say something. I don't know why she sent it. Maybe she thought she'd improved. I don't know. And that was a genuine mystery to me. And I don't remember what Gabby uh, said when I asked her, because I think I said at some point, like, why did you send it? And I want to say she did it as a show of good faith that she was trying to do like, but I don't remember uh, exactly what it was. Um, but I honestly was like, that was a stupid move to me. Like, I never thought that was a good move. Anyway, uh, and it wasn't a stupid move. That was actually what I think was one of the few good moves on Gabby's part in this situation was giving an arc to someone that she knew was a good poetry reviewer, even if that person doesn't tend to like her poetry. I think the fact that she wanted a variety of reviews on her arcs, and now I don't know what Gabby's motivation was when she sent this out, but I, I actually, that was something that gave me some respect for her. So once again, Jimmy not understanding how reviews work. And this makes it sound like Gabby and I talk all the time. We have talked twice since the beginning of the year. I went and looked. It's literally been twice in the last six and a half months. Uh, anyway, she writes, and, and, no, I write, just pass along what I observed. Then what happened is, uh, I don't know if this is archived on Twitter, how easy it is to get to. I'm not worried about people going and seeing it, uh, but you'll see in my message, I reference it. Rachel starts tweeting about our message. Our conversation doesn't continue. I say something and instead of replying to me and talking to me, her friend, who not only has uh, been her support system, uh, I don't think it would be too far to say that as a friend, I loved Rachel. Uh, I don't have that many friends too, so I don't know if that's gonna come off as weird if she eventually watches this. Uh, if she's like, wow, I just didn't get that, but I really don't have that many friends and she and I were closer than most people, which is gonna make one of her replies kind of hurt me. It, it did kind of hurt to hear, but anyway. Um, so she makes these tweets about it and she says in these tweets, basically that Gabby sent me to do this. And so I felt like- Rachel blocked his name. She never said it was Jimmy that did this. What was on Twitter was these messages with his name blocked out. She said, a friend sent me this. She never wanted it to be known that it was Jimmy. The only reason anyone knew it was Jimmy was that Jimmy responded to the thread and was like, this was me. He put himself on blast. She wanted to ask other people's opinion about whether they also, because I understand seeking a second opinion on this. If I'd been in her position, I would have done the same thing. Let's say I had a friend that I'm about to review. Yeah, I'm about to review the, the Straight Girl's Guide to Sleeping with Chicks. And I one of Jen Sincero's friends, who's also one of my friends in this situation, this person doesn't actually exist, this is hypothetical. But let's say in that situation, that person reaches out to me. If I didn't have this situation to look at beforehand, I probably would have screenshotted, blocked out their to and tweeted saying book review community what do you think of this this seems weird what, what what should i do and even though we're friends i wouldn't put them on blast but i understand why she wanted to seek alternate opinions on this very weird and invasive situation anyway so i wrote back she's a person who basically received nonstop hatred all the time for a litany of things many totally undeserved only many there are some things that gabby's done that are really cringy that are really shitty I, again i don't like everything gabby's done it doesn't stop me from being friends with someone Maybe she does deserve it for her poetry. As her friend, I do feel bad for how often she tries to show a brave face when she's actually completely or clearly shattered. 
Doesn't matter if she deserves it for her poetry or not, if Rachel didn't like the poetry and Rachel is a reviewer, especially one who was sent an arc of the book, she can say whatever the fuck she wants about the book itself. The rest of this doesn't matter. I, th I think he's going too much into circumstances that if he had taken a second to look at the book review community or what we do, he would know that this doesn't matter. None of this matters. And now, this is why it bothers me, is that, like, the book world is what I do for my career. And we're having YouTubers who are much bigger than most book creators. Gabby Hanna's got 5 million subscribers. Jimmy's got almost 400,000 subscribers, which is on par with the biggest book review channels that exist. We don't have any PewDiePies in the book review world. It's not like that. So the fact is, bigger creators than the book community itself are getting involved in things and misrepresenting the way this community works. So that's my problem with this. It doesn't matter whether Gabby deserved criticism for her poetry or not. It doesn't matter what the book was like. It doesn't matter what Rachel tweeted about the book or whether Jimmy interpreted the criticism as constructive or not. Doesn't fucking matter. None of this is relevant. And then from there, the rest of the video kind of goes into the interpersonal conflicts between Jimmy and Rachel and how Gabby got involved or whatever and Jimmy and Rachel blocked each other and stopped being friends and like I'm not here to get involved in in creators friendships that I've never met you know I'm not here to get involved in other people's friendships there's I'm sure gonna be plenty of videos that discuss all of that or discuss Gabby Hanna's angle in this or whatever I'm here to talk about it from a book publishing perspective I understand how he might not have understood the implications because, as I've said, I'm also a neurodivergent person who specifically has the same type of way of thinking that he does in the sense that we take things very, very literally and only interpret what's said and don't pick up on, always pick up on the cues or the reading between the lines. I am exactly the same way. So if that's where this is coming from, I completely get that. But I think now is the time to really be willing to listen to criticism and to understand why it doesn't make sense to insert yourself into a community that you don't understand the conventions of. And that's not against him as a person. I still think, I still think that Jimmy really was trying to just protect his friends at the end of the day. And I do think that this could all come down to a miscommunication. I don't think Jimmy's a bad person. I don't think Rachel's a bad person. When we review something, the reviewer, the review is for the reader and the reviewer has the right to say whatever they want. And when you put your your opinion into it or you you talk about the author's feelings as a friend of the author that doesn't that doesn't help the author community so this video is just for, do i think that jimmy should apologize to rachel honestly i do but i don't think i don't think he did something wrong intentionally i just think it's important for him to understand that these type of things where bigger YouTube creators get involved in the book world completely unaware of how things are normally done and then acting like their way of doing it was right, in the end it leads to a culture that makes the author profession look bad by fostering this community of keeping reviewer spaces less safe for the reviewers to feel open to say what they want without fear of being guilted or fear of the author coming for them or things like that. I think that's a really important thing, not just for him to remember, but for all bigger YouTubers who are getting into the book reviewing space, especially as more and more celebrities and big YouTubers start putting books out. What did you guys think of this video and this topic? Please let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments below. I know that this is not, this is kind of a complicated situation and that's why I wanted to share my perspective just from that one specific angle that I think is really the root cause of this entire conflict in the first place. But I really hope everyone's able to work everything out because I hate to see a good friendship go to waste. Anyway, I will see you guys again tomorrow for, as I plugged, the, my review of the Straight Girl's Guide to Sleeping with Chicks. Happy Pride Month. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.